So I was sitting on this guy's face the other day. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about life, you know, and like when I think I lost my real innocence. And um, you know when you're driving on the highway and there's a truck driver next to you and you're a little kid and you're like, honk, honk, and he beeps his horn. <laughs> and you're like so excited. It's the time that you do the honk, honk, and the truck driver's like, eh, I'm going at you. And you're like, all right, 12 is grown up. That's when that happens. <laughs> Two weeks from my bat mitzvah, I really am a woman. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm excited. So I'm really broke right now. So I called my dad and told him I was pregnant because that's $400 immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Can't call my mom because uh, we just found out a couple years ago she's possessed by a demon. It's the worst one. It's called like menopause. It's so terrifying, and I just, I've lost my mother. And she was a ginger to start with, so she had no soul. So that thing just crawled in there and like lives inside of her, you know? It says super mean things. <laughs> and she's convinced that I have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm too awesome to have that. <laughs> but all right. <laughs> She tried to hand me her box of tampons like ceremoniously a few months ago. Like, I won't need these anymore. And like, if we were cool, I would have been like, it's the next step on your journey. But she called me awful names. So I was like, ha ah, you're barren. <laughs> I'm gonna go hang out with my boyfriend now. <laughs> That's very bad, I know, I'm sorry. I have all these Cuban cousins, which is random because I'm Jewish. But uh, my Jewish grandfather married a Cuban lady and they just kind of like, Pff red you know there's a whole bunch of them now and uh, I really wanted to be like them when I was younger so I would try to learn Spanish to talk to them and uh, I was super white so it didn't work out that well but they called me flaquita which I don't know if you know means very skinny not in a nice way it's fine so I always knew when they were talking about me <laughs> and my cousin came up to me one day and was like tu tienes la cara de una cebolla which means you have the face of an onion <laughs> I was in like Spanish one, so I was like, onion, oh my God, she thinks I have layers and I'm deep. <laughs> We're gonna be best friends. <laughs> and then she hit her cocaine in my purse. <laughs> I learned a new word that day, puta. <laughs> That's what happens, I'm sorry. I have all these friends are always like, like, like my status on Facebook, did you like it? Do you like my, my picture? Do you like my post? Do you like my, blah, blah? I'm like, yeah, I liked it in real life, like a real human. <laughs> now I hate it and you. <laughs> I would unsubscribe to your newsfeed, but frankly, I like making fun of your posts, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep you. <laughs> Carry on. I saw this lady the other day walking with the most gorgeous coach purse, and on the outside of it, like a keychain, was mace spray. Maybe it was Chanel or something, I don't know. And I feel like to men, that just says like, try it. Try to rape me. <laughs> I've been here before, it's so bad, I keep it on the outside of my purse, at the ready. And like women, I looked at her and I was like, oh my God, she must get raped so much. <laughs> She's so pretty. <gasps> oh my God, I wanna be here. <laughs> so um, I'm dating a younger guy right now and uh, he's excited all the time. I found him on, I found him on uh, cougarpups.com. That's where I look for those. <laughs> but I can't ever get him to calm down. <laughs> I'm exhausted, okay. And I find myself Googling the strangest things, like uh, YOLO, <laughs> finger blasting, you know? I found myself lately looking up how to deep throat. It's, uh, it's a battle royale every time, let's just say. It's, it's super fun though, you know? And there's always there's so much crying and gagging, and I'm always like, I'm the one doing the work. Relax, you know? <laughs> And at the end of the day, like, do I really like myself any better? Like, do I want to die like that? With the, the breathing and the inability to breathe? I don't think so. I don't think I want to die that way. I should probably stop going on cougarpups.com. It's an addiction, okay? It should be an intervention. You can't help it when you reach a certain age. <laughs> so a bunch of kids just graduated from high school, which is a super thing. I'm so happy for them, except I'm losing my drug dealer who has like dreams of going to college or something. <laughs> I'm really disappointed in that. And uh, <laughs> we're fighting right now anyways, because via text, it's very professional, but I'm always like, can I buy a vowel? I don't know what this THX is, is. I'm, I'm so confused, you know? And one day he texts me boo thing, and I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta knock this down. So I was like, in person, I was like, you can't, you can't text me boo thing. I don't even know what that is, really. And he was like, you started it, you texted me boo. And I'm like, it wasn't boo like, hey boo. It was boo like boo. 
where are my drugs? <laughs> I don't think that came across. <laughs> Anyways, you guys have been great. Thank you. So I would consider myself a cougar. Cougar, yes, where are we cougars? Be proud to be a cougar, ladies. Be proud. Don't, some people don't like that. I think it's great. I think we've earned that. It's a badge of honor, right? I take my thing from rappers. They take negative stuff and they make it positive. I've been to jail. What? I've been shot. What? I'm a cougar. I got muffin tops. What? Stretch marks. What? Right? Hot flashy. We could even have our own gang signs. I'll be high to be like, crow's feet. <laughs> I love it. I go to Vegas. You guys go to Vegas? Yeah, Vegas is the best. So much fun, but it's expensive, right? I went, oh my God, I stayed with the big pyramid. I stayed in that place. Oh, they got bathroom attendants everywhere. You feel guilty, you gotta tip those people. I had diarrhea that week, cost me 1,500 bucks. <laughs> I lost more money taking a crap than playing craps. I bet you guys didn't know that, it's legal. Wow, I made so much money. <laughs> that means those hookers every year have to pay their taxes. They, what's that day like at H&R Block? <laughs> How do I itemize candy panties under food or clothing? <laughs> Since they shot my pimp, can I file as an independent contractor? <laughs> can I get laid off? the kind of stuff I think about. I love this job because I get to travel and I get to meet people, I get to go to parties, I get to meet celebrities, they love me. Celebrities give me swag. I'm still wearing some stuff I got from Lindsay Lohan. That chick gave me these earrings. You guys know what this stuff is, don't you? I love bootleg, bootleg rocks. You guys get bootleg, oh, designer knockoff bags. I love that stuff. You go to Times Square, they throw it down, five dollar, five dollar. I got a Gucci bag last week, ran away like I was like getting away with crime. I pulled it out of the bag, it said Gucci. I can't help it, this is the stuff that I think about. My age, I just got a mammogram, holy crap. Oh, I had no idea. You had no idea, right? I thought it was gonna be like an x-ray machine. Two metal plates, they stick that in there, flip a switch, it's done, no. Plexiglass plates, you get to watch your breasts getting squished like silly putty. They spread across the room, they kept going and going and going. My breast felt like a chicken patty in a George Foreman grill. She let them out, I had no idea. She let them out, <laughs> they're like this. <laughs> National Geographic breasts. <laughs> I'm looking at them, I said the heck with it, I'll play them like click clacks. <laughs> I found some stairs, I played the slinky race down the stair to see which one would hit the bottom first. Oh, you don't care. You don't care what we have to go through. I love it though. I love this business. I love to travel. I walk around the streets. I love, I go up to Harlem. I thought black men loved me. I love black men. I thought they loved me. One Jamaican guy, my ass is so flat. One Jamaican guy stopped me. He says, excuse me, mom. Can I use your ass to roll my spliff on it? We Latinos, most of us Latinos are Catholic. We do crazy stuff, right? We're the ones that leave the Christmas lights up all year round, anybody else? 14 years, my dad leaves the Christmas lights up annoying the hell out of me. I'm like, dad, take them down. We must have a huge electric bill. He goes, no, do you see that wire? That goes to the Johnson's house. <laughs> Latinos are crazy. We see the Virgin Mary everywhere. Everywhere, right? Italian seed on meatballs, we see it on tortillas. Never happens with any other religion. I'd love to see that change. Some other religion, right? Some Pakistani guy, right? 
I was doing it in Tony in the back of the 7-Eleven. Right there on a little Debbie snack cake, I saw Allah. Now five times a day, we pray to the little Debbie snack cake. You guys didn't like <laughs> Black people don't see stuff that never happens. I'd love to see that, right? Watching CNN one night, right? Some Jamaican guy comes in. Yeah, I'm gonna think I'm crazy. But last night we broke up in a Jamaican beef party, right at the Jamaican beef party. Ailey Selassie, Bob Marley, and Tupac Shakur smoking a spliff together. <laughs> or perhaps it was me. <laughs> you guys, that's my time. You guys, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I know I don't look like I'm a comedian. I don't look like I'd be super hilarious. Um, I have a lot of friends, though, that tell me that I look like the kind of girl who'd be the second one that they'd get rid of on a dating show. <laughs> like, uh, I'm like perfect for a limit you know? Like, he'll keep me around for the first round because I'm kind of cool, a little bit funny, you know? But then when it comes to second round, I clam up because I don't want to get in the hot tub and make out with other girls. Like, ooh. <laughs> No, sorry, I'm not gonna pretend I like this. I don't know, I'm sorry, you know, like maybe being a sleaze is not my idea of fun, you know, so that'd make me a downer and he'd get rid of me. But uh, the girls on that show are so ridiculous all the time on the dating shows, they're so silly. You always hear that girl, like during the interview, she always says, I want a guy to like me for, you know, my brains, not my body. You know, uh, you know like my brains, not my body. And uh, I'm just waiting for one day when the cameraman interjects and he's like, excuse, excuse me, ma'am, um, your, your brains are part of your body. <laughs> it's all together under the body category. And it's probably why he doesn't like you. You're a little dumb, just a little dumb there. Um, I don't mean to sound sexist, I'm not. Uh, I'll tell you who is sexist, though, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, <laughs> dead man, so, uh, you know, who has the last laugh? Most of us ladies. Uh, Charles Darwin, though, I was watching a special him, on him the other day, and they said that he felt that women were the inferior gender because here are the reasons why. He said that women are not as intelligent as men, right off the bat, fine. Uh, he also said that we're not as focused as men, and then he said that we lacked mechanical skills. I know, uh, and then it was so weird because like, as he started talking about how he came to those theories, I got distracted because a cute butterfly landed on my nose. <laughs> oh, oh, and I just giggled. I, I, I just couldn't keep it together. Oh. I know I get silly sometimes. I, I sound a little silly. And I blame it on the fact that I watched the Tyra Banks show. I know. It's just, she's just awesome at monologues. She's just this awesome reporter, model cyborg, you know, <laughs> the voice of reason. Uh, so I, I buy into her monologues. And the other day she had this show where she thought she was doing an expose on how society treats fat people. And uh, you know how fat suits work. They don't touch the face. They just put this puffy suit on you. And uh, so Tyra Banks goes out in town, does normal everyday things. You know, she gets her nails done. She's eating a hot dog in the park, watching kids play. She comes back to the studio. And they're like, how did it go, Tyra? And she's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, it was awful. Everywhere I went, people were looking at me and pointing and staring and laughing. <laughs> and she's just so upset. And meanwhile, I'm sitting at home like, yeah, of course. They're probably thinking, dang, ain't that Tyra Banks? <laughs> wow. Wow, she got fat. <laughs> and like overnight, too. How, how did she do that? Oh, Tyra. Oh, boy. I know. Uh, I have a friend who doesn't believe that anyone is fat. She's like, Becky, fat does not exist. That's stupid. No one is fat. All those people that you see that are big, those people are actually really, really strong. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know why I know this? I'm like, please break it down. How are they strong? She's like, because uh, think about this. If you see a man who's 700 pounds, he is carrying 700 pounds. Wow. You know, it's like he is working out just by being alive. Every day is a constant exercise for this man. 
you know, like, it's like, he's so strong, he can have like 10 pizzas in one sitting. And of course he's sitting, he's tired. You've gotta be, you're carrying all that weight with you. Oh. I guess in that case, that's why my mom's always freaked out. She's just always worried that I'm gonna get so strong, I can't find a husband. I guess he can't handle me, literally. Oh. The parents are, are adorable, my parents are great. Um, they do this one thing that I think is super cute. Anytime they leave the house and they leave the puppies alone, you know, the, the dogs all to, their, all to the, themselves, you know, have a realm over the house, um, she always worries that the dogs are going to get into stuff. So she's like, leave the TV on for them. You know, that way they have something to do. <laughs> that way they won't be bored. I'm like, okay, give them an assignment, that's fine. And then she's like, oh, and put it on Animal Planet too so they see one of their own, just in case. Like, don't give them fantasies. Poor little puppies. But it's like, the dogs are not so bored to where, like, they leave the house, and then the dogs are like, oh, thank God, some privacy. Whew. Now, now we can really lick ourselves. Yeah? The way we want to? Oh, thank God. They're gone. Finally. Back it up. I want to whiff that. Yeah, let's, let's smell that. Oh, great. Oh, if only we were entertained. Oh, poor puppies. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm strictly a dog person, can't stand cats. Don't like cats at all. Uh, more than I don't like cats, I don't like cat owners. It's hard for me to get into that brain of cat owners because cat people are always making excuses for their cat's behavior. And cats are jerks, they're so mean to their owners. It's like, it's like having an abusive spouse and I have this girlfriend who's always coming into work and she has cuts and you know, scratches and bruises all over and like, oh my God, what's going on at home? She's like, oh, it's just mittens, you know. <laughs> he's, he's crazy, it's just, uh, I didn't have dinner ready for him, so, you know, he got upset and then I wanted to play with him and he didn't want to play, uh, so I got, I got this black eye. It's fine, uh, he loves me though, he really loves me, don't tell anybody. He uh, absolutely loves me. Uh, I was falling asleep the other day watching Dr. 90210. I'm sure this has happened to plenty of people, but it's that, it's that, that place right in between dreaming you know, and, and being awake. It's like slipping off into your sleep. And uh, you know how you hear things going on and your mind starts to justify everything and make like a little mini movie? So the other day I was watching Dr. 90210 and uh, there's construction going on by my apartment. So I'm listening to that hammering going on and Dr. 90210. And as I was falling asleep, I was just thinking, it's gonna take a roof full of Mexicans to fix this woman. <laughs> oh my God, how big is her face? Oh. And uh, I, I love Mexicans, I mean, I, I am one. Uh, but I really love Latin men, and I don't mean to be biased, but uh, I've, dated, I've dated various men, and uh, by far, Mexican men are the best because they're so passionate and expressive and emotional. And I learned that if a Latin man loves you, he will prove it to you by airbrushing your name on the back of his car in Old English. <laughs> and if that's not love, that's at least calligraphy. I am super <laughs> impressed. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Hollywood. I used to live here. Uh, I had to move because I got tired of all the parades. We have a lot of parades here. A lot of pride going on. Uh, we recently just had Dyke March 2004. <laughs> Great event. Uh, I love this event because of their motto. Their motto is, we're marching for lesbian visibility. Yeah, I think that's funny because if you're a woman and you look like a man, I see you. <laughs> okay, let's not stop traffic for that stuff. They, literally, 30,000 women show up for this event. They all look like John Denver and Mike Ditka. Marching down Santa Monica Boulevard with big, sign big signs that say, we're gay. I wanted to sit on the sideline with my own sign that said, no <laughs> You know, if you're gonna have a parade, state, state something that I don't know already. You know, we're gay, but we don't wear flannel. <laughs> say something, you know, clue me in. Um, I'm very thirsty, I've had very little to eat. This is my third beer, thank you. Um, I, uh, I have a really hard time taking a compliment I noticed recently too. Uh, uh, whenever uh, somebody says something nice to me, I react like an elderly woman who is in an insane asylum and is told it's time to take her pills. 
anytime somebody says something like, wow, Sharon, your hair looks great tonight, I go, ah, no, get away, no. It's a very strange reaction. And I'm like, why do I do that? Why do I hate myself so much? And I feel like it comes from like being a fatherless daughter. Because I grew up without a dad. Don't get depressed. This is supposed to be funny, not having a dad. <laughs> really, it really is. You have to experience it. Uh, I, uh, I grew up without a dad. And uh, when I was growing up, I used to think it was really cool to just have a single mom, you know? And kids would always say, don't you miss having a father around? And I'd go, oh, give me a break. I am a strong, independent woman. My mother is a strong, independent woman. She is showing me how to live my life the right way. Now quit asking so many questions and put your back in my mouth, sir. <laughs> Class is about to start. <laughs> Get this over with. Uh, thanks, I'm glad you guys opened yourselves up to that. Don't be afraid to laugh in front of the senior, it's all right. Uh, I, uh, I recently went through a really horrible breakup too and I highly recommend it. And let me, I have this other strange pattern, alcoholics, love them. You know, if you have your shit together, I'm like, oh, I, I don't have time for you. Come back, alcoholic. Uh, I recently went through a really horrible breakup, and um, the reason I recommend it is because I, uh, I uh, how do I say this? Uh, I, I look fabulous. That's what I'm trying to say. My ex-boyfriend literally scared 20 pounds off me. Okay, like, if you're going to take a swing at me, I'm wildly attracted to you. And everybody's like, Sharon, you look amazing. What have you done? I'm like, I didn't do anything. I got the crap beat out of me on Selma Avenue. Check it out. You know, let me tell you something. 10 minutes of terror beats diet and exercise any day. All right, you don't like that either. That's too bad. Uh, I actually had to find, I actually found my father. I grew up without a father, but I went and found him. I was told uh, once I was an adult, well, here's what happened. My stepfather adopted me, which is why I have the last name Houston. And then I was told I was actually a Lopez. And, um, um, I decided to find my biological father when my stepfather, who had since divorced my mom, went to Puerto Rico and married a 15-year-old girl and brought her back to the United States as my new step-step mom, which is awful. Now, I don't know if you know, I, I was 20 at the time. I don't know if you know what it's like being disciplined by a 15-year-old when you're 20. It's something like, Jaron, go to your room. But first, can you take me to 7-Eleven to get a wine cooler because I want to party tonight, huh? And I didn't even have to drive because she had her learner's permit. It was really awful. And um, I went to visit them to try to accept it. I thought, okay, this is like very West Side Story, you know, like the American falling in love with the Puerto Rican. Then I remembered no pedophiles in that musical. So I went to visit them. And the first thing we did is we went bowling. And then we went to Yvette's favorite restaurant, Chuck E. Cheese. And she loved it because she said, we have rats that big in Puerto Rico, pero they cannot sing and dance like Chuck E. Cheese, okay? And it was just awful. So I thought, okay, I've got to find my father. So all I knew was that his last name was Lopez and that he lived in Miami. <laughs> Cubans, Cubans. And uh, so I started calling information. Now you can only get three numbers from information at a time. And I had to call back like hundreds of times. And by like my 80th call to directory assistance, the conversation between the operator and myself went something like this. Miami directory assistance, can I help you? Hey LaTanya, it's me, I need three more. Girl, you crazy, hold on. <laughs> to give me numbers and I had like all these like pages and pages of Robert Lopez's and I was like, okay, so here's what I do, okay? I cracked open a pack of cigarettes, a Diet Coke and did two lines of crystal meth. That's what fatherless daughters do. Thank you. She's like, I do crystal. Shh. All right, so, um, so uh, and I started calling all these people and none of these Cubans wanted anything to do with me. I would go, um, hi, um, are you my father? Eh, no, speak English. Uh, eres tu mi papi? Eh, no, speak Spanish. Click, 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 nothing. <laughs> But I found him because I left messages on people's answering machines. And I was a total mess. I used no discretion whatsoever. And I'd leave this long drawn out, hi, my name is Sharon. If you're the same Robert Lopez that went to Miami High and you were briefly married to Renita Aaliyah and you were a drum major, then you are my father. Please call me, I love you. And I'm thinking, how many people got that message who like had nothing to do with me? You know, I can imagine how many Cubans came home to an angry wife who was like, Roberto, ven aquí, who are you sleeping with? Who? Oh, you have a daughter. But I found my dad and um, I reintroduced him to my mom and they fell back in love after not having seen each other in 19 years. That's the sweet part of the story. The bad side of this part of the story is that uh, my father and I are so much alike that we absolutely hate each other. Yeah, so now I'm stuck with this prick for the rest of my life. Fantastic. He hates me because he hates the fact that I hang out with homosexuals. That's one of his big beefs with me. 
And I went to uh, visit them over the summer and I wanted to watch Queer Eye for the straight guy. And he totally lost it. He was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna watch that, Sharon. You can't make me watch that. Sharon, being gay is not normal. It's not normal, sweetheart. And I was like, really? Um, well, speaking with a thick Spanish accent when you were born in this country, also not normal. <laughs> About them apples. All right. I've exposed myself to you partially. I'm wearing a tank top and my soul. Um, thank you. Did I get applause from a 16 year old for that? Oh, no, no, no. I'm kidding. The girls are like, yay, tank tops. All right, rock and roll. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm very uh, lucky, though, that, you know, even just growing up without like a lot of people around or stuff, I had some really great role models to help like, kind of guide me. My favorite role model was my bus driver from elementary school, Mrs. Washington. She's so awesome. Uh, she was my elementary school bus driver, 50 something years old, African American, always wore a uniform to work, never let us get away with anything on the bus. And I can still see her eyes looking at me in the rear view mirror and saying, Sharon, you better stop pulling on that little boy's hurt. I am trying to you. Don't make me stop this bus, because I will. <laughs> and I am so grateful for her because she has followed me through my life, keeping me on the straight and narrow. Like some people have a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. I have a devil on one shoulder and a middle aged black woman driving a yellow school bus on the other. Girl, you better put that money back in your mama's purse. Stealing's wrong. I don't make me stop this bus. Sharon, don't smoke that marijuana. It's just gonna make you ignorant. Don't make me stop this bus. Sharon, get out that alley and put your drawers back on. Hit, I love you. <laughs> Shoot. I love her. I feel like we need more strong women like that in power, you know? Like, I feel like Mrs. Washington shouldn't be driving buses, she should be flying airplanes, you know? Because there'd never be a hostage situation. They want to put these expensive, bulletproof double doors on cockpits, forget it. Put a $5 rear view mirror in the cockpit, let Mrs. Washington fly. The second somebody starts some crap on that plane, you're gonna hear, um, excuse me, Mohammed, I know you tripping coming to me with that box cutter. Oh, you better sit your OG ass down right now. I will stop the plane right here. And Sharon, get out that bathroom and put your drawers back on. He don't love you neither. All right, thanks a lot, you guys. Good night. How you guys doing? All my beautiful Hello. Latinos. Yes, I, my name is Peggy Gutierrez, and I'm very happy to be here. I'll start off by telling you guys a little bit about me. Um, I just got married. Thank you. To an Arab. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I love it. Those are some perks of being married to an Arab, you know, because you get cheap oil changes. <laughs> Two people have gotten cheap oil changes. Thank you. <laughs> it's true, though. In his part-time job, I get, you know, free Slurpees and stuff like that, you know. It's a lot, a lot of fun. My parents absolutely hate when I invite them to the house, you know, because they lock up the towels. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, but just don't push his buttons because he's got a real explosive personality. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. It really <laughs> no, he's actually a great guy. He's also a comic, too. You know, he, he just got himself a new car. He's got one of those uh, Toyota Camels. I mean, Camrys. <laughs> Thanks for getting those. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I used to be married to a white guy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I wanted to own something. But, uh, <laughs> don't moan and groan. You know it's true. If I married a Mexican, I'd be renting for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'd have grandma and grandpa co-sign. <laughs> you know it's true. Yes, I married a white guy. It didn't work out though because he used to like to act macho around me all the time. You know, real macho. Because he thought he married this little meager Mexicana, you know, that just came from Mexico, you know? Like, I'm here for you. Yes, I am. It's <laughs> a bunch of bull. And I was going to make him burritos and tacos, carne guisada, tortillas, and change his dirty underwear. Mm -mm, not this Mexican. Uh -uh. You know what he used to tell me? I'm serious. Woman? Get downstairs and get me a beer. <coughs> we live in a one-story, pendejo. <laughs> Didn't work out. My parents warned me. You got to live with them before you marry them, you know, because you find out stuff about them that you wouldn't have known before, right? Right? Isn't that very true? 
I didn't know that he used to like to go to Hooters. Hooters. I hate that stinking place, Hooters. See, Arabs don't go to Hooters. They own them all. But they don't go. And my ex-husband used to tell me the same thing when he went all the time. Oh, I just go for the buffalo wings. I just go for the buffalo wings. Yeah, right. More like buffalo breasts. See, women know what I'm talking about. Ladies, I think they should come up with a restaurant for women, right? Yeah! Exactly. We deserve it. I'm thinking something like Peckers. You know where all the drinks are stirred, not shaken? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that'd be the first time we had a rum and coke with a head on it. <laughs> I'd pay $12 for that. <laughs> You'd have to watch out for the hard liquor, though. You know, uh, <laughs> that'd be a stiff drink, wouldn't it? <laughs> they just keep coming out, don't they, pals? Just keep coming out. Yeah, my ex-husband used to like to go to, uh, I mean, I used to like to watch basketball all the time, you know? Basketball, I know it's a big thing, you know? So I used to watch basketball with him all the time. I was sitting there watching, and I'm listening to the commentating. Have you ever listened to the commentating closely? It's like a man's macho conversation, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what I'm saying? I'll give you an example. Nice soft finger roll to the rim. <laughs> He aims for the center and drives it to the hole. <laughs> These are the jokes, people. Come work with me now. <laughs> you know, Bob, it's not about the dribble, it's about the penetration. <laughs> Look at his ball control. <laughs> oh, he got that shot off early. <laughs> and he still had 20 seconds on the shot clock. Bob, how'd he do that? Gotta listen to this stuff, it's true. <laughs> sure puts a twist on the WNBA though, doesn't it? Can you imagine that one? <laughs> Boy, this period's put a cramp in her style. <laughs> Coach needs to pull the plug, put in the second string. <laughs> ah, you're listening to me. <laughs> Brought to you by Bush Gardens. <laughs> You're never gonna listen to basketball the same, I'm telling you. You guys are gonna go, look, they double tamed her. Gosh, they double tamed her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tell you guys a little bit more about me. I'm also an actress and a singer. Thank you for the support, I appreciate it. Can't you see me in one of those Mexican soap operas, you know, on Telemundo or something, you know? One of those real hot and heavy scenes, you know, Maria, Papi. That'd be me. All right, I've got a few supporters. I'll make it one day. I'm also a singer. Do you guys ever watch MTV? Yeah. Watch these video channels, music video channels? Yeah, they're pretty cool. Some of the singers out there, though, what are they coming up with nowadays? You know, I've been studying them, too. I don't understand how these singers discover that they can sing that way. I'm watching them closely. Like Mariah Carey, for instance. How does she discover how she could sing? She didn't just wake up, roll out of bed, and go, I can sing. I have a theory. I think she was walking around the house humming the tune and she stubbed her toe or something, you know? I had a vision of love and it was oh, 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 oh that you, oh, yeah. That really hurt my toe. No, just kidding. <laughs> That's how she discovered it. Or some of these other, what about Alicia Keys? You guys heard of her? Alicia Keys, she's got that great tune called Fallen. You know, I'm falling in and out of love with the you. But halfway through the tune, I think she hurts herself. Have you heard that part? <laughs> with the you. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Never felt this way. <laughs> Or what about Eminem? What the heck's going on with him? Does anybody know what the world's going on with him? Two trailer park girls go round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. 
back. Two try to pack out of back. Okay, never mind. You know I've ruined that song for you though, don't you? Next time you hear it, you're going to be going Damn comedian. Oh, music is a big part of my life. I love singing. I'm always studying. I go on auditions, too. And the singing and the auditions are screwing me up. It's totally screwing me up. Like, I got sent on this uh, all-lesbian cruise line audition. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get creative, you know. So I walked in. Next. Near, far, wherever you are. You know, here at Dyke Cruise Line, one thing is true. Unlike the Titanic, we won't go down on you. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you very much. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you. Ooh, you got scared. Don't be scared of the brown lady. I come in peace. How are you? <laughs> Let's get this started. I'm from Puerto Rico. That means I am a black person that speaks Spanish. The boat stopped a little early. A Puerto Rican girl is nothing but a black girl that speaks Spanish. They say things like, tu viniste a ver este nene sin tu cheque. All that means is, no, you did not come see little Leroy without your child support. That's how it is. Yes, we all want to marry a black guy. That's why we want our sons to go to the NBA. <laughs> Yes. So we're in a recession, people. We got to think of the future. So my mother's from Puerto Rico, fluent in English, but never speaks English around someone that speaks English. So if I bring someone home, she'll be like, tu me traiste esta gringa sucia a la casa. And I have to say, girl, she loves your bangs. She thinks your bangs are hot. Yo con gringa no como, eh? She wants you to stay for dinner. She says, duh, the middle finger. No, me la bota de aquí. That's how we say Jesus in Puerto Rico. Yes, she loves you. Terrible, my mother has a problem with white women, but I love white women. I think white women are heroes. They're the only ones that can have sex with 76 men and still marry a senator. Ooh, I love it. Cindy McCain is a figment of my imagination. I think it's lovely. We can't do the same thing. Our street value goes down. So, uh, hey. So, uh, I was a model and um, I quit because I got tired of being hungry. Any of you know I mean? I'm sorry, I didn't quit. I just didn't make it. It's really hard concentrating on the catwalk when all you can think about is eating a cat like Chinese people. It's really hard. You're wondering all the time why Naomi Campbell is so angry and throwing blackberries at people. It's because she's hungry. She's famished, she's starving. I, as a woman of color with a little bad temper, I wish she threw a blackberry at me because then I'd hit her with a printer and she'd have cannon on her forehead. And they, did you hear about her? They said she spit on a police officer at Heathrow Airport. She wasn't spitting, she was throwing up. She just didn't have anything in her stomach. I know anorexia well, I was anorexic. I was 5'11 and 117 pounds, and my agent said, you think you can get down to 100? And there goes my mother. Well, what do they want you to lose, mija? You're fat? <laughs> no, 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 modeling, no. So that went out of the window. I was married to a Muslim at the time, and uh, I don't know if anyone in here is Muslim, but he wanted me to wrap up in the garbs. And I was like, last time I checked, Gucci did not make hijab. <laughs> I have never seen a Burberry burqa. I don't know if that's gonna happen. You're trying to ruin my career here. Is that terrible? So, uh, you know, I wanna give my props to those people out there who are getting bad press. I have a tendency to want to see things positively, like Manny and his steroids. Hey, you know what? I think anyone who has dedication enough to go through all of that they need to go through and risk a kidney from steroids should get a check for a work ethic. It's just me. Wow, you guys are judgmental. Wow. And Chris Brown, I, I think, yeah, he beat up Rihanna and it was pretty bad, but at least Rihanna got to live to tell the story. So let's look at this positively, folks. 
Come on, stop being so negative. Look at Lacey Peterson. I'd rather be Rihanna yodeling. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, I'm trying to get some fun going here, right? So ladies, I was thinking about this. I don't know if you're the only ones, but sometimes I wish that someone that I slept with died so I wouldn't have to count them. <laughs> the double standards for women are just terrible, right? I'm like, wow, and the guy that I slept with that I don't want anybody to know about is the healthiest individual I know. He's a vegetarian, he lives at Jamba Juice, always working out, and I'm like, why won't he die? Oh my goodness, and he's gonna tell everyone. And I'm like, maybe not die, but maybe get a disease where he can't talk or text. <sighs> you know? Because with my luck, he'd find a Netcha sketch and draw out the entire thing and be like, I'm like, no, no. Oh, so dating is really bad for me in LA. Anyone in here ever dated a preacher's kid? Oh yeah, the traumatized people don't want to talk right now, I understand. They have, the, they have this art that they've developed that they justify all bad things with the Bible. And my ex-boyfriend was cheating on me and I'm like, you can't go around having sex with everyone. And his response was, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I was like, really? Are you not afraid of diseases? Though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. Sex without a condom? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. I was like, wow. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Yeah, people have been uh, complaining about my comments because uh, I was very happy that Hillary Clinton didn't win. And I was like, come with me, listen to me. I, I love Hillary. But can you imagine her making a decision at the very desk where Bill got his knob polished? <laughs> oh, one flashback and everybody's gonna die. So I said, you can't run America. You can run some conditioner through Chelsea's hair, but not America. Am I wrong for that? Wow, you guys are really judgmental. I'm not feeling really well. I went downtown Los Angeles, and I was in Santee Alley, which is where people go shopping. And that's where I got my shoes, my jeans, my shirt, my ring, everything from. And uh, I got really sick, because I ate one of those hot dogs. Yeah, I got so sick, and then my mom, I called my mom, and I'm like, mommy, I was so sick, I ate one of those hot dogs downtown. And she's like, that's what usually happens when you have a rat sandwich. That's what usually goes down. Oh, guys, come on, relax. We've all eaten a rat sandwich. I see you at Jack in the Box. It happens. I'm a vegetarian now. Let's see here. So. I like to give women dating advice, and I want to tell you, stop spending your money trying to find a man at church and on the internet. It's too expensive. You want to know where you want to find a man? You want me to tell you? Okay, you find a man on the 405 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's where all the men are. You have time to bond. It's where I met my ex-boyfriend. Joaquin, he was a very lovely man. There we were on the 405 for hours. We bonded by Mulholland Avenue. It was just beautiful. And he would do anything for me. Joaquin would do anything for me. Manicures, pedicures. I have a rare blood disease. He even gave me his blood. Nice guy, right? So a couple of years down the line, I decided I don't want to be in the relationship anymore. So I said, you know what? I'm out of here. Gonna go. And he says, wait a second. You can go, but you can't take anything that I bought you with you. I was like, how very LA of you. Because that means everything, folks. So I have to, car keys, house keys, credit cards, jewelry, even the outfit I had on. He said, yeah, I bought that too. So I said, okay, I get naked, I'm a proud woman. I have to start somewhere. And I head for the door and he taps me on the shoulder and he says, uh, didn't I give you blood? So I snatched my tampon out 
And I said, I'll pay you in monthly installments. I'm Aida Rodriguez. Thank you.